this episode, we speak with Randy Schlitter of Rand's Aircraft on his newly installed turbocharged Rotax 915 IS. All right, so out here at Oshkosh 2022 at the Rand's Designs booth, and Randy's always coming up with some new things, and uh, well, this year's no different. There's something new. What do we got new under the hood here? Uh, the uh, Rotex 915 uh, IS. It's at, uh, I think it's 143 horse momentarily, and then 138 continuous uh, turbocharged engine. Okay. Uh, obviously, you've got uh, a couple different options for your engine platforms. Uh, for starters, I think you're using the 912 ULS and the IS. Yeah, we kind of phased out the 912 uh, I, uh, or ULS. It's just like putting a four-cylinder in a Mustang. I use that analogy quite frequently. Actually, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the so you're sticking to the IS models, basically. Yeah. Well, we don't. We actually don't have anything for the 912 IS. Okay. Uh, we're just uh, focusing on the 915 IS because it's pretty much um, relatively straight across with the 240. I mean, the 340 sucks. It's been a long week already. At Wednesday, Brian. Sorry. <laughs> but what I mean by straight across is like, say, for instance, if you um, fly up to about oh 9500 or just below that, these two aircraft are equal. Uh, that's when the 180 horse is about down to the same output as this engine. And then after that, you'll start seeing this pull away a little bit. Okay. So as a standard offering for your S21 and your aircraft, you're going to kind of stick with a, a 915 IS and the Titan line? Yeah. Yeah, that's the plan. Well, it's, it's, well, let me correct that. We may work in some Lycoming product. as, uh, But right now we're searching for availability. And there's a, a great crossover from uh, <laughs> the Titan obviously uh with the <coughs> excuse me lycoming because of the um well we all know that the titan's a clone of the lycoming so okay. so it'll drop right in okay. are you still going to make available the, the 912 uh, options for for customers as well as a non-standard well we'll support those uh, there may be the rare case where if we get our arm twisted to do that and it would be for the guy who's building a light version of this airplane and they're going to stay out of the mountains possibly you know the versatility of the airframe goes down with the lack of power you know uh, a florida guy might be happy with the 912. sure sure now this airframe we'll, we'll talk airframe for a second then jump back to the the engine you you've developed this as a very wide envelope of operating parameters you want to talk about that just for a quick second right one of the uh, greatest safety features you can have in an aircraft is to have a big envelope and uh, what we mean by that is that where does it stall, what speed, and then where does it cruise. And the closer you can get past, uh, like say you go three to almost four to one, even five, the safer the airplane becomes because there's more tolerance against um, maybe ham-handed, uncoordinated flight, uh, steep turns low to the ground, that kind of thing. You have a little more forgiveness. And uh, that makes the aircraft also uh, more versatile for landing sites and um, just opens up a big world if you can fly a plane that lands, uh, you know, quite slow, uh, say stall at 40 and cruise 160 plus, I mean 150 plus. Yeah, that's an incredible uh, envelope there. And then even your, your V&E, which you would never exceed in straight and level, but if you were to uh, descend, you're at like yeah. what? Well, the real reason we have such a high VNE on this is that structurally we're adequate, but the other is is that if you're flying a turbocharged engine, which is what this is, and you're getting up there, oh my gosh, some of our customers are 21,000 with these, and so they have that margin because uh, your um, true airspeed starting to really creep up. Uh, this will do 160 at 10.5 uh, uh, true airspeed, uh, probably about mm, 40 inches manifold. Yeah, that's a, a real performer, especially the turbo, being that you have all of your power at sea level as you do all the way up at uh, 10,000 or even 20,000. Yeah, you do have kind of all your power, other than your prop is suffering a, a, suffering a degradation due to density reduction. So that's typical. So um, what kind of numbers are you seeing with the 915? Obviously, you've had this in testing for some time, uh, both on uh, climb outs, uh, crews, and then, of course, uh, gallons per hour. Uh, if you're flying, it depends on what levels you like to fly at. It's really going to love being uh, quite high. Like say on the trip down, 
Uh, we were up against a Titan uh, 340, and they were running way back on the throttle to hold, um, we are doing about 145 true. We were burning two gallons an hour more, but we were at 5,500. Had we gone, had we both gone up above 9,500, that, that story would have changed. We would have been outrunning them probably on less fuel. Not 100% sure on that. We have to do a little more testing, but I have seen as uh, little as eight gallons per hour at 160 at 10.5. And that'll change with gross weights and things like that. So comparatively, it kind of makes it complex to decide which engine. So I want to simplify it down to the simplest question. Do you live at a high altitude? If you live at something like 3,500 uh, field elevation, this might be your engine. Now that's not to say that the Titan won't work in the same environment because we got Titans in that environment and they're still getting uh, seven, 800 feet a minute at well past 12,000, so. But you're also speaking to density altitude. If you're starting off at 3,500 and you have a high density altitude day, then you're already double that or something. Exactly, you could be taking off in seven or 8,000 densities. So you're basically mountain flying, even though you're not in the mountains, so. I'm at the airport a lot more these days editing and walking out of the FBO, out onto the ramp, it's bright. So I've been wearing my flying eyes eyewear a lot more these days. They're lightweight, extremely comfortable, flexible, and have micro-thin temples that slip under your headsets. You like saving money? Get 10% off right now by using the code EXPERIMENTAL. Check out the links below. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. The Aviators Clinic at aviatorsclinic.com. Diamond Doors at diamonddoors.com. Flying Eyes at flyingeyesoptics.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. Let's talk about the, uh, the, the prop that's driving everything up front. Uh, what are you using and, and how are you liking it so far? Uh, pretty much flawless. It's got sense in its blades. It's the Airmaster, which is an electric constant speed, which you can also uh, intervene and make it not constant speed by flipping a few switches, which means you can be the guy making it where you want for pitch and things like that. Similar to the blue knob in most aircraft, but the distinction is is that it can be non-automatic. You can actually over pitch it and things like that where a true constant speed won't let you do that to, to any great extent unless you pull back the throttle a lot. And this, this is an electric system? Yeah, yeah. you can see right there you got your uh, bands and your pickups and whatnot. And it's been fairly reliable and fairly decent thing. It's, uh, it adds quite a bit to the performance envelope, especially coming out of the blocks. That's where you're going to see one of the major advantages of a constant speed and the other one is of course at altitude and uh, gaining a little bit of cruise over a fixed pitch. Surprisingly with this airframe it's not outstanding, it's maybe seven, eight knots over a fixed pitch. So. And how is this controlled? Do you have like another vernier type or is this all automatic being it's electric? It's, uh, well, uh, this one has a, uh, a blue switch similar to the throttle uh, quadrant you'd have on a typical conventional setup. And you just have like selections, take off, climb, cruise. Uh, we set this up uh, and it also has manual. You got like first gear, second gear, third gear and reverse? You can. Well, do you have reverse? Uh, they do allow that option, but you have to convince them you're putting on a seaplane. Yeah, they don't want people showing off backing up into their hangar, I guess, but that'd be kind of cool. Uh, no, so yeah, you have, uh, it's basically uh, constant speed for simplifica simplified by having those markings for those different settings. But for, um, for most operators, and we did a lot of testing just leaving it on cruise. And the reason we did that, it's a lot simpler and it really doesn't seem to degrade any part of the envelope. Yeah, with, with this engine, uh, I would imagine with 
a turbo, you have a lot of torque, so they can probably handle a wider range of, uh, of thrust. Yeah, you, that of course, anytime you can do a constant speed prop and not have a severe weight penalty, you're going to gain. Uh, it's surprising how a lot of people think uh, uh, it's a magic solution because one thing that will happen and why it was favorable in this install is that we're still like 70 pounds lighter than the Titan. So now let's say we put a Titan out there with a constant speed prop. That's going to be in the maybe 45 pound range and because where the moment is and the centroid of gravity on the engine and the prop you're going to be adding a few pounds to the tail so now your all up weight's heavier so you're kind of losing some benefit in weight and as we all know weight does detract from flight performance absolutely absolutely or take thanks for taking a few minutes to uh one take the top cowling off and showcase the engine of this brand new installation and explain a little bit about how it works and operates uh we're at the Oshkosh 2022 in the uh, home built section as usual. You're, you're, you've been here pretty much the same, how many years now? Well, I, I, I first time I showed it at Oshkosh was 1984. Yeah. Long time. Oh, no, it's just yesterday, you know. <laughs> well, good to see you here again, again, and again, and thanks for uh, the interview. Well, thanks for coming out and talking to us, Brian. Appreciate it.